Okay, 965 to 969, Parkinson's disease. Pathophysiology. Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease, PD, also referred to as Parkinson's disease, and paralysis agitans is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that is the third most common neurologic disorder of older adults. It is a debilitating disease affecting motor ability and is characterized by four cardinal symptoms, tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, or akinesia, or slow movement, or no movement, and postural instability. Most people have primary or idiopathic disease um, a few patients have secondary Parkinsonian uh, symptoms from conditions such as brain tumors and certain antipsychotic drugs. Motor activity occurs as a result of integrating the actions of the cerebral cortex, basal ganglia, and, cerebral, er, and cerebellum. The basal ganglia are a group of neurons located deep within the cerebrum at the base of the brain near the lateral ventricles. When the basal ganglia are stimulated, muscle tone in the body is inhibited and voluntary movements are refined. The secretion of two major neurotransmitters accomplishes this process, dopamine and acetylcholine, or ACH. Dopamine is produced in the substantia nigra, nigra, as well as in the adrenal or the adrenal glands, and is transmitted to the basal ganglia along a connecting neural pathway for secretion when needed. ACH is produced and secreted by the basal ganglia as well as in the nerve endings in the periphery of the body. ACH producing neurons transmit excitatory messages throughout the basal ganglia. Dopamine inhibits the function of these neurons, allowing control over voluntary movement. This system of checks and balances allows for refined, coordinated movement, such as picking up a pencil and writing. Widespread degeneration of the substantia nigra then leads to a decrease in the amount of dopamine in the brain. When dopamine levels are decreased, a person loses the ability to refine voluntary movement. The large number of excitatory ACH secreting neurons remain active, creating an imbalance between excitatory and inhibitory neuronal activity. The resulting excessive excitation of neurons prevents a person from controlling or initiating voluntary movement. Not only does PD interfere with movement as a result of dopamine loss in the brain, it also reduces the sympathetic nervous system influence on the heart and blood vessels. This loss results in the orthostatic hypotension frequently seen in the patient with PD. PD is separated into stages according to the symptoms and degree of uh, disability. Uh, table 44.5 uh, yeah, shows that. Stage 1 is a mild disease with unilateral limb involvement whereas the patient with stage 5 disease is completely dependent in all ADLs. Other classifications refer simply to mild, moderate, and severe disease. Etiology and genetic risk. Although the exact cause of uh, PD is not known, um, it is probably due to environmental and genetic factors. Exposure to pesticides, herbicides, industrial chemicals and metals, as well as drinking well water, being over the age of 40, and having reduced estrogen levels are known risk factors for the development of PD. Well water. Genetic considerations. A number of inherited forms of the disease are associated with gene mutation. Uh, genetic mutation has been identified in some families with PD. Of the nine genes identified, the Parkin 1 gene, or on chromosome 4, has been the most studied. In the presence of a genetic mutation, alpha synuclein, a major uh, component of Lewy bodies, 
is produced and thought to contribute to neuronal death. Table 44.5, Stages of Parkinson's Disease. Stage 1, Initial Stage. Unilateral limb involvement. Minimal weakness, hand and arm trembling. Stage 2, Mild Stage. Bilateral limb involvement. Mask-like facies. And uh, slow shuffling gait. Stage 3, Moderate Disease. Postural instability. Uh, increased gait disturbances, uh, severe disability, or, oh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, so that was stage three, moderate postural instability, uh, increased gait disturbances, and then stage four is severe disability, and that's akinesia and rig rigidity, and stage five is complete ADL dependence. Incidence and prevalence. PD affects more than 1.5 million people in the United States. As the population ages, the number of these affected is expected to dramatically increase. Men are affected more often than women. Symptoms of idiopathic PD typically begin in people between 40 and 70 years of age with a peak onset in the 60s. Uh, young onset PD um, typically occurs in people 21 to 40 years of age. The disease progresses faster in patients who are older at dis diagnosis. Patient-Centered Collaborative Care Assessment. Collect data related to the time and progression of symptoms noticed by the patient or the family. The older adult who may assume that these behaviors are normal changes associated with aging may ignore early signs and symptoms such as resting tremors, bradykinesia or slowed movement, um, and problems with muscle rigidity. Tremors are usually noticed in the upper extremities <coughs> first and may increase with stress. Slow voluntary movements and reduced auto automatic movements may be manifested by a change in the patient's handwriting. Chart 4410 summarizes the clinical manifestations of Parkinson's disease. Assess the patient for rigidity or resistance to passive movement of the extremities, which is classified as cogwheel, manifested by a rhythmic interpretation or interruption of the muscle movement, plastic, defined as mildly restrictive movement, and lead pipe, or total resistance to movement. Cogwheel, plastic, and lead pipe. Uh, rigidity is present early in the disease process and progresses over time. Observe the patient's ability to relax a muscle or move a selected muscle group. Chart 4410, key features. Parkinson's disease, posture. Stooped posture, flexed trunk, fingers abducted and flexed at the metacarpophalangeal joint, and uh, wrist slightly dorsiflexed. Gait, slow and shuffling, short, hesitant steps, propulsive gait, difficulty stopping quickly. Motor, bradykinesia or slow movement. Uh, muscle rigidity, akinesia, tremors, pill rolling movement, mask like facies, uh, difficulty chewing and swallowing, uncontrolled drooling, especially at night, fatigue, difficulty getting into and out of bed, reduced arm swinging on one side of the body when walking, hmm. micrographia or change in handwriting or handwriting gets smaller, speech, Slow, low-pitched voice, uh, dysarthria, or slurred speech, echolalia, automatic repetition of what another person says, and repetition of sentences, hypophonia, or soft voice, that's hypophonia, um, change in voice volume or articulation, autonomic dysfunction, uh, things having to do with autonomic dysfunction would be orthostatic hypotension, uh, excessive perspiration, oily skin, seborrhea, flushing, changes in skin texture, uh, blepharospasm or eyelid spasm, uh, psychosocial assessment, emotional uh, labial, labial, label, emotionally labial, 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 <laughs> uh, depressed, paranoid, easily upset. Um, rapid mood swings, cognitive impairments, i.e. dementia, delayed reaction time, sleep disturbances.
changes in facial expression or a mask-like facies with wide open fixed staring eyes are caused by rigidity of the facial muscles figure 41 44 1 this rigidity uh, can lead to difficulties in chewing swallowing particularly if the pharyngeal muscles are involved uh, as a result the patient may have inadequate nutrition uncontrolled drooling may occur some patients develop dementia later as the disease progresses in addition to changes in voluntary movement many patients experience autonomic nervous system sy symptoms such as excessive perspiration and orthostatic hypotension orthostatic hypotension was originally thought to be a side effect of levodopa therapy however it is probably related to loss of sympathetic innervation in the heart and blood vessel response the diagnosis of PD is made on the basis of clinical findings after other neurologic diseases are eliminated as possibilities. There are no specific diagnostic tests. Analysis of cerebral spinal fluid CSF, may show a de decrease in dopamine levels, although the result of other studies are usually normal. Other diagnostic tests may be done, such as an MRI, a single photon emission uh, spect, or a uh, uh, PET scan. Common nursing diagnoses and collaborative problems. Nursing diagnoses that often apply to patients with Parkinson's disease uh, include impaired physical mobility related to neuromuscular impairment, risk for falls related to decreased muscle strength, muscle rigidity, and orthostatic hypotension, risk for self-care deficit related to neuromuscular impairment, risk for impaired verbal communication related to facial muscle rigidity, chronic confusion related to dementia, risk for imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to dysphagia. Uh, interventions. In addition to the healthcare provider, physical and or occupational therapist, speech language pathologist, nutritionist, and case manager uh, collaborate with the patient and family to develop an interdisciplinary treatment plan. In some cases, palliative surgery may be performed to assist the patient to remain mobile for as long as possible. Chart 4411 summarizes best practices for nursing management of the patient with PD. Non-surgical management. Drug therapy is, essential, is a, an essential part of management, which decreases signs and symptoms and allows the patient to provide self-care and have a reasonable quality of life. One of the most important desired outcomes is that the patient will improve mobility or movement, a basic human need. Drug therapy. Drugs are prescribed to treat the symptoms of PD with the purpose of increasing the patient's functional abilities. An equally important goal is to prescribe drugs with minimal long-term side effects. Many questions and controversies remain about which drugs to use, when to start therapy, and how to prevent complications. Drug administration is closely monitored and the health care provider adjusts the dosage or changes therapy as the patient's condition requires. Teach the patient and family how to monitor for and report adverse effects of drug therapy. Dopamine agonists. Uh, dopamine agonists mimic dopamine by stimulating dopamine receptors in the brain. They are typically the most effective, drug, uh, effective during the first three to five years of use. The benefit of these agents is f uh, fewer incidents of dyskinesia, or problems with movement, and wearing off phenomenon, or a loss of the response to the drug, when compared with other drugs. This problem is ca characterized by periods of good mobility, or on, uh, alternating with periods of poor mobility, or off. Patients report that their most distressing symptom is off time. Chart 4411, best practice for patient safety and quality care. Care of the patient with Parkinson's disease. Allow the patient extra time to respond to questions. Administer medications promptly on schedule to maintain continuous therapeutic drug levels. Provide medication for pain, tingling in limbs as needed. Uh, monitor for side effects of medication, especially orthostatic hypotension, hallucinations, and acute confusional state or delirium. Collaborate with physical and occupational therapists to keep the patient as mobile and as independent as possible in ADLs. Allow the patient time to perform ADLs and mobility skills. Implement interventions to prevent complications of immobility such as constipation, pressure ulcers, and contractures. Schedule appointments and activities late in the morning to prevent rushing the patient or schedule them at the time the patient's optimal level of functioning. 
Teach the patient to speak slowly and clearly. Use alternative communication methods such as a communication board. Refer to speech language pathologist. Uh, monitor the patient's ability to eat and swallow. Monitor actual food and fluid intake. Collaborate with a nutritionist. Provide high protein, high calorie foods or supplements to maintain weight. Recognize that Parkinson's disease uh, affects the patient's body image. Focus on the patient's strengths. Assess for depression and anxiety. Assess for insomnia or sleeplessness. Examples of dopamine agonists are uh, apomorphine uh, or apokin, a morphine derivative, uh, prem, premipazole premip, or mirapex, and uh, rapinarol, rapinarol or requip. Another drug in this class, uh, rotigotine, is available as a continuous transdermal patch, or NUPRO, to maintain a constant level of dopamine. Dopamine agonists are associated with adverse effects such as orthostatic postural hypertension, hypotension, hallucinations, sleepiness, and drowsiness. Remind patients to avoid operating heavy machinery or driving if they have any of these symptoms. Teach them to change from a lying or sitting position to standing by moving slowly. The healthcare providers should not prescribe drugs in this class to older adults because of their severe adverse drug effects. Almost all patients are on Cinemet, a combination uh, car levodopa carbidopa drug, at some point in their disease. It may be the initial drug of choice if the pa patient's presenting symptoms are severe or interfere with work or school. Um, both an intermediate release, IR, and controlled release, CR, form of Cinemet is, in varying doses are available. The levodopa agents are less expensive than the dopamine agonists and are better at improving motor function. Long-term use leads to dyskinesia, or inability to perform voluntary movement. Teach patient and family to give the drug before meals to increase absorption and transport across the blood-brain barrier. Catechol O methyltransferases, or CM, uh, COMT, COMTS, are enzymes that inactivate dopamine. There, therefore, COMT inhibitors block this activity thus prolonging the action of levodopa. Uh, one example is entacapone, or Comtan, which is often used in combination with levodopa. Uh, Stilovo, or Stalovo, excuse me. Stalovo is a combination of levodopa and carbidopa and entacapone. The benefit of these combinations is that the disease is treated in several uh, ways with one drug. However, they are not beneficial for those patients who need more specific dosages of individual drugs. Um, MOA, or monamine oxidase type B, MAOB inhibitors, uh, MAOIs, are more popular for use in patients with early or mild symptoms of PD. Intacapone or Comtan and Seligaline or uh, Deprinil or Eldapril are often given with Lebidopa uh, for early or mild disease. A newer MAOI for PD is Rascaline Mesylate or Azelect which can be given as a single dose or with levodopa. These drugs slow the main type B or monamine oxidase in the brain, increasing dopamine concentrations and helping reduce the clinical manifestations of PD. Teach patients taking MAOIs about the need to avoid foods, beverages, and drugs that contain tyramine, including aged, smoke, or cured foods and sausage. Remind them to also avoid red wine and beer to prevent severe headache and life-threatening hypertension. Uh, patients should continue these restrictions for 14 days after the drug is discontinued. When other drugs are no longer effective, uh, bromocryptine mesylate or par parlodel, a dopamine receptor ag antagonist, uh, may be uh, prescribed to promote the release of dopamine. It may be used alone or in combination with carbidopa, levodopa, or cinnamet. Uh, some providers uh, may prescribe parlodel um, 
early in the course of treatment. It is especially useful in the patient who has experienced side effects such as dyskinesias or orthostatic hypertension while receiving Cinemet. Uh, amantadine or Symmetrel is an antiviral drug that has, an, uh, has anti-Parkinson uh, benefits. It may be given early in the in disease to reduce symptoms. It is also prescribed with Cinemet to uh, reduce dyskinesias. Uh, Rivastigamine or Exelon is a cholinesterase inhibitor that is used only when patients with PD have dementia. This drug works to improve the transmission of acetylcholine uh, the brain, uh, in the brain by delaying its destruction by the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. For severe motor symptoms uh, such as tremors and rigidity, one of the older anticholinergic drugs may be prescribed. Examples are uh, benztropin or cogentin and procyclidine or chemidrin. These drugs should be avoided in older adults because they can cause acute confusion, urinary retention, constipation, dry mouth, and blurred vision. For these reasons, they are not prescribed today as often as in the past. Newer and safer drugs are now available. For, patient, for the patient on any long-term drug therapy regimen, drug tolerance or drug toxicity often develops. Drug toxicity may be evidenced by delirium or acu acute confusion, uh, cognitive impairment, decreased effectiveness of the drug, or hallucinations. Delirium may be difficult to assess in the patient who is already suffering from chronic dementia as a result of PD or another disease. If possible, compare the patient's current cognitive and behavioral status with his or her baseline before drug therapy began. When drug tolerance is reached, the drug's effects do not last as long as previously. The treatment of PD drug toxicity or tolerance includes a reduction in drug dose, a change or, of drug or in the frequency of administration, a drug holiday, particularly with levodopa therapy. During a drug holiday, which typically lasts up to 10 days, the patient receives, receives no drug therapy for PD. Carefully monitor the patient for symptoms of PD during this time and document assessment findings. Exercise and ambulation. A freezing gait and postural instability are major problems for patients with PD. Non-traditional exercise programs such as yoga and tai chi may help elevate mood, as well as, as well as improve mobility in the early stage of the disease. Early in the disease process, uh, collaborate with the physical and occupational therapist to be to plan and implement a program to keep the patient mobile and flexible by incorporating active and passive range of motion exercises (ROM) muscle stretching, and activity. Remind the patient to avoid concentrating on his or her feet when walking to prevent falls. So remind the patient to avoid concentrating on his or her feet when walking to prevent falls. Don't concentrate on your feet. Self-management. In collaboration with the rehabilitation team, encourage the patient to participate as much as possible in self-management, including ADLs. The team makes up the environment conducive to independence in activity and as stress-free and as safe as possible. Occupational and physical therapists provide training in ADLs and the use of adaptive devices as needed to facilitate independence. The occupational therapist, OT, uh, evaluates the patient for the need for adaptive devices, e.g. special utensils for eating. Injury prevention. Patients with PD tend to not sleep well at night because of drug therapy and the disease itself. Some patients nap for short periods during the day and may not be aware that they have done so. This sleep misperception may put the patient at risk for injury. For example, he or she may fall asleep while driving an automobile. Therefore, teach the family, patient and family to monitor the patient's sleeping pattern and discuss whether he or she can operate machinery or perform other potentially high-risk tasks safely. Nutrition. Collaborate with the nutritionist, registered dietitian, and RD to evaluate the patient's food intake and ability to eat. The patient's intake of calcium, vitamin K, and other nutrients is evaluated, uh, especially in the patient 
who is susceptible to falling or has difficulty swallowing. Uh, the RD considers the patient's bowel habits and adjusts the diet if constipation occurs. If the patient if the patient has trouble swallowing, collaborate with a speech language pathologist (SLP) for an extensive swallowing evaluation. Based on these findings in the patient interview, an individualized nutritional plan is developed. Usually, a soft diet or thick uh, cold fluids such as milkshakes or are more easily tolerated. So, vitamin K and calcium are important. Small frequent meals or a commercial powder such as thicket, love it, added to liquids may assist the patient um, who has difficulty swallowing. Elevate the patient's head to allow easier swallowing and prevent aspiration. Remind UAP and teach the family to be careful when serving or feeding the patient. The SLP can be very helpful in recommending specific feeding strategies uh, be sure the UAP record food intake daily or as needed. The patient loss loses weight because of altered food intake and the increased number of calories burned secondary to muscle rigidity. Teach the family to weigh the patient once a week so, the, so that adjustments to the diet can be made as indicated. As the disease progresses and swallowing becomes more of a problem, supplemental feedings become the main source of nutrition to maintain weight with meals and other foods taken as the patient can tolerate. Communication Collaborate with the SLP if the patient has speech difficulties. Together with the healthcare team, patient, and family, develop a communication plan. The SLP teaches exercises to strengthen muscles used for breathing, speech, and swallowing. Teach the patient to speak slowly and clearly and to pause and take deep breaths at times during each sentence. Teach the family the importance of avoiding unnecessary environmental noise to increase the listener's ability to hear and understand the patient. Ask the patient to repeat words that the listener does not understand. Have the listener watch the patient's lips and nonverbal expressions for cues as to the meaning of the conversation. Remind the patient to organize his or her thoughts uh, before speaking and use facial expression and gestures, if possible, to assist with the listener's ability to understand. If the patient cannot communicate verbally, he or she can use alternative methods of communication, such as a communication board, mechanical voice synthesizer, commu computer, or personal digital assistant, PDA. The SLP assesses the ability to use these devices before a decision is made about which method to use. Some older patients may not want to use electronic methods to communicate. Psychosocial support. Although not all patients with PD have dementia, impaired cognitive function and memory deficits are common. Some patients also experience changes in gait and, tre and tremors that are uncontrollable. In the late stages of the disease, they cannot move without assistance, have difficulty talking, have minimal facial expression, and may drool. drool. Patients uh, often state that they are embarrassed and they tend to avoid social events or groups of people. They should not be forced into situations in which they feel ashamed of their appearance. Encourage them to undertake activities that do not require small muscle dexterity, such as light, uh, modified aerobic exercises. Collaborate with the social worker or case manager to help the family with financial and health insurance issues, as well as respite care or permanent placement if needed. Refer the patient and family to social and state agencies as well as support groups as needed, e.g. the National Parkinson's Foundation, Parkinson.org. Teach the patient to emphasize the pa patient's ability or teach the family to emphasize the patient's ability to uh, or strengths and uh, abilities or strengths and provide positive reinforcement when he or she meets expected outcomes. The patient, the family or significant other, and the rehabilitation team mutually set realistic outcomes that can be achieved. The long-term management of PD pre presents a special challenge in the home care setting. A case manager may be required to coordinate interdisciplinary care and provide support for the patient and family. 
Impaired mobility affects the patient's daily lifestyle, including sexuality. The case manager or home care nurse uses a holistic approach to ensure that psychosocial as well as physical needs are addressed. As the disease progresses and drug effectiveness decreases, refer the family to a palliative care organization or hospice. Referral sources can be obtained from the Center to uh, Advance Palliative Care, CAPC.org, uh, which advocates applying the principles of palliative care to chronic disease. Chapter 9 discusses palliative and hospice care in detail. Surgical management. Several options are available if surgery for the patient with PD is needed. Surgery is a last resort when drugs are not effective in symptom management. The most common surgeries are stereotactic pallidotomy and thalamotomy. Uh, thalamotomy, oh wait, thalamotomy, yeah, thal thalamotomy. Although newer surgical procedures are being tried, deep brain stimulation may also be done. Uh, stereotactic uh, pallidotomy and thalamotomy, thalamotomy. <laughs> stereotactic pallidotomy, uh, opening into the pa pallidum within the corpus striatum. Okay, opening into the pallidum within the corpus striatum uh, can be a very effective treatment for controlling the symptoms associated with PD. First, the target area within the pallidum is identified by a CT or MRI scan. Next, the stereotactic head frame is placed on the patient, uh, IV sedation is given, and a burr hole is made into the cranium. An electrode or cylindrical rod is inserted into the target area. The target area receives a mild electrical stimulation and the patient's reaction is assessed for uh, reduction of tremor and rigidity. If this result does not occur or if unexpected visual, motor, or sensory symptoms appear, the probe is repositioned. When the probe is in the ideal location, a permanent lesion or scarring is made to destroy the tissue. The patient is monitored in the post-anesthesia care unit, or PACU, for about one hour and then is returned to the inpatient unit for continuing post-operative care. As an alternative to stereotactic pallidotomy, the surgeon may perform a thalamotomy, um, opening into the thalamus of the brain for the stimulation, for treatment of tremor through thermocoagulation, or high-frequency currents to destroy tissue of brain cells. This... Um, Procedure is effective for a limited number of patients because bilateral procedures have increased surgical complication rates. Only unilateral or one-sided surgery is done to benefit the side of the body that is most affected by the disease. Deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, may uh, be used when drug therapy is no longer effective in controlling the patient's symptoms. A thin electrode is implanted in the, human, or in the uh, thalamus or subthalamus and then connected to a pacemaker that delivers electrical current to interfere with tremor cells. Uh, the electrodes are connected to an implantable pulse generator or IPG that is placed underneath the skin of the patient's chest, similar to a cardiac pacemaker. The patient uses a magnet, a magnet placed over the IPG to adjust the settings and to check the battery status. Here she continues on drug therapy after the procedure, but a smaller dosage may be needed to control symptoms. Hmm. Fetal tissue transplantation. Fetal tissue transplantation is an experimental and highly controversial procedure. Fetal substantia nigra tissue, um, either human or pig, is transplanted into the caudate nucleus of the brain. Preliminary reports suggest that patients show clinical improvement in motor symptoms without dyskinesias after receiving the transplanted tissue. Long-term results are yet to be seen or studied. And that was uh, Parkinson's. Okay, on 1002 to 1009, MS and ALS. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is a chronic autoimmune disease that affects the myelin sheath and conduction pathway of the central nervous system, or CNS. It is one of the leading causes of neurologic disability in young adults. This chronic disease is characterized by periods of remission and exasperation, or flare. Uh, patients progress at different rates and over different lengths of time. However, as the severity and duration of the disease progresses, the 
periods of exasperation become more frequent. Patients with MS have a normal life expectancy as long as the effects of the disease are treated. A major concern reported by most patients is how long it takes to establish a diagnosis of MS. Many have been to several health care providers, given different diagnoses and treatments, and or been told their symptoms were related to stress and anxiety. All too often, the patient and family are relieved to finally have a diagnosis, but express anger and frustration that it prevented the start of appropriate treatment. Therefore, establish open and honest communication with the patient and allow him or her to share frustrations, anger, and anxiety. Pathophysiology. Multiple sclerosis is characterized by an inflammatory response that results in diffuse, random, or patchy areas of plaque in the white matter of the CNS. When this occurs, the myelin sheath is damaged and its, and its thick, thickness is reduced, or demyelinated. Myelin is responsible for the electrochemical transmission of impulses between the brain and the spinal cord and the rest of the body. Impulses are transmitted but are not as effective as before. Over time, they may be, they may be completely blocked. The white fiber tracts, or axons, that connect the neurons in the brain and spinal cord are generally involved in MS. The areas particularly affected include optic nerves, pyramidal tracts, um, posterior columns, brainstem nuclei, and the periventricular ventricular region of the brain. Periventricular region of the brain. Eventually, with repeated exasperations of the disease, damage to the axons becomes permanent. Major types of MS include relapsing or uh, hyphen remitting primary progressive, secondary progressive, and progressive relapsing. The classic picture of the relapsing remitting type of MS, or RRMS, uh, occurs in, the, in most of the cases. The course of the disease may be mild or moderate depending on the degree or di of disability. Symptoms develop and resolve in a few weeks to months after which the patient returns to baseline. Primary progressive MS or PPMS involves a steady and gradual neurologic deterioration without remission of symptoms. The patient has progressive disability with no acute attacks. Patients with this type of MS tend to be between 40 and 60 years of age at onset of the disease. Secondary progressive MS or SPMS begins with a relapsing remitting course that later becomes steadily progressive. Functionally, fu or functioning continues to decline with no clear times of remission. And then progressive relapsing MS, or PRMS, is characterized by frequent relapses with some partial recovery, but not a return to baseline. Progressive accumulative symptoms and deterioration occur over several years. Etiology and genetic risk. The exact cause of MS remains unknown and is very complex. Research continues on viral, immune, immunologic, and genetic and environmental etiologic factors. Viruses are well recognized as causes of demyelination and inflammation. Therefore, it may be possible that a virus or other infectious agent is the triggering factor in MS. Although a number of viruses may have been studied, no single virus has been identified as causing MS in genetically predisposed people. Genetically predisposition, genetic predisposition is determined by a pattern of antigens, in particular HLA, uh, DR2, and DQ6. The disease tends to occur among family members, especially siblings. According to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, having a first-degree relative such as a parent or sibling with MS increases a person's risk of developing the disease. There is a higher prevalence of certain genes in populations with higher rates of MS. Common genetic factors have been found in some families in which three in, in which there is more than one person with MS. Many genetic alterations contribute to the development of MS. Not all patients with MS have the same alterations. The environment may also contribute excuse me. The environment may also contribute to the development of MS. The disease is seen more often in the colder climates of the northeastern 
Great Lakes and Pacific Northwestern states as well as in Canada. Incidence prevalence. MS usually occurs in people between the ages of 20 and 40 years, but cases may occur in those younger than 15 years and older than 50 years. Over 500,000 people in the United States are currently affected. Women are affected about twice as often as men. Patient-centered collaborative care assessment. History. Multiple sclerosis, MS, often looks like neurologic diseases, which can make the diagnosis difficult and prolonged. As a result, patients often see many health care providers and undergo a variety of diagnostic tests and treatments. Obtaining a thorough history is essential for accurate diagnosis. Ask about a history of vision, mobility, and sensory changes, all of which are early indicators of MS. Symptoms are often vague and nonspecific in the early stages of the disease. Of, significant, of significance is the patient's report that symptoms were first noticed several years earlier, but that medical attention was not sought because the symptoms disappeared. Ask about the progression of symptoms. Pay particular attention to whether the symptoms are intermittent or are becoming progressively worse. Document the date, month, and year when the patient first noticed the clinical manifestations. Next, ask about factors that aggravate the symptoms such as fatigue, stress, overexertion, temperature extremes, or a hot shower or, uh, or, or a hot shower or bath. Okay, ask the patient and the family about any personality or behavioral changes that have occurred, e.g. euphoria, a very elated mood poor judgment, attention loss. In addition, determine whether there is a family history of MS. Physical assessment, clinical manifestations. M multiple scler sclerosis produces a wide variety of manifestations, chart 4515. Any myelinated fibers of the brain and spinal cord may be affected. To determine a patient's specific manifestations, perform a complete neurologic assessment as described in Chapter 43. First, assess the patient's ability to move. The patient often reports increased fatigue and stiffness of the extremities, particularly the legs. Fatigue is one of the most disabling manifestations, affecting almost all patients with MS, unlike fatigue in others. Uh, unlike fatigue in others, MS fatigue is associated with continuous sensitivity to temperature. Uh, chart 45.15, key features. Multiple sclerosis, muscle weakness and spasticity, fatigue, intention tremors, uh, dysmetria or inability to direct or limit movement. Um, numbness or tingling sensations, paresthesia, hypogesia, hypo, hypog, hypo, hypogesia, decreased sensitivity, sensitivity to pain, ataxia, decreased, that's decreased motor coordination, dysarthria, slurred speech, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, diplopia, double vision, uh, nystagmus, involuntary eye movements, scotomus, which is changes in peripheral vision, um, decreased visual and hearing acuity, tinnitus, vertigo, uh, ringing in the ears and dizziness, bowel and bladder dysfunction, alterations in sexual functions such as impotence, uh, cognitive changes such as memory loss, impaired judgment, and decreased ability to solve problems or perform calculations back to texts text uh, flexor spasms at night may awaken the patient from sleep further examinations reveal increased or hyperactive deep tendon reflexes clonus uh, positive Babinski's reflex and uh, absent abdominal abdominal reflexes uh, gait may be unsteady because of leg weakness and spasticity Uh, significant cere cerebellar findings include intention tremor or tremor when performing an activity, uh, dysmetria or inability to direct or limit movement, and uh, dysdiodochokinesia, dis <laughs> which is uh, 
inability to stop one motor impulse and substitute another. Motor movements are often clumsy. The patient may lose balance easily and may exhibit signs of poor coordination. During examination of the cranial nerves and brainstem function, ask the patient if he or she has or had episodes of tinnitus, ringing in the ears, vertigo, dizziness, and hearing loss. Assess the facial weakness. Assess for facial weakness and dysphagia. Speech problems include uh, dysarthria or slurred speech and slowed scanning speech. Typical clinical findings from assessment of the patient's visual acuity, visual fields, and pupils uh, in include blurred vision, diplopia, double vision, decreased visual acuity, scotomas or changes in peripheral vision, uh, nystagmus or involuntary rapid eye movements. Uh, sensory findings include uh, hypogesia or diminished sensitiv sensitivity to pain, paresthesia, facial pain, and uh, decreased temperature perception. The patient may report numbness, tingly, burning, or crawling sensations. If demyelination of the spinal cord has occurred, the patient may experience bowel and bladder dysfunction as well as uh, alterations in sexuality. The patient may have an uh, aeroflexic bladder or may experience frequency, urinary, ur urgency, or nocturia. Ask the patient if he or she has constipation or incontinence. Inquire about problems with sexuality, including impotence, difficulty sustaining an erection, and decreased vaginal secretion. Psychosocial assessment. Assess the patient for mental status changes. Co cognitive changes are usually seen late in the course of the disease and include decreased short-term memory, concentration, and ability to perform, to perform calculations, inattentiveness, and impaired judgment. After the initial diagnosis of MS, the patient is often anxious. Apathy, emotional lability, and um, depression are common problems that occur later. The patient may be euphoric or giddy, either as a result of the disease itself or because of the drugs used to treat the disease. Assess the patient's previously, assess the patient's previously used coping and stress management uh, skills in preparing him or her for chronic, usually debilitating disease. Depression is the most frequent psychiatric disorder diagnosed in people with MS. Laboratory assessment. No single specific procedure is definitively diagnostic, diagnostic for MS. However, the collective results of a variety of tests are usually conclusive. Changes may be evident during an acute attack. Abnormal cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, findings include an elevated protein level and a slight increase in the white blood cell count. CSF electrophoresis reveals an increase in the myelin uh, basic protein and the presence of oligoclonal or IgG bands. IgG bands are seen in most patients with MS. Other diagnostic assessment. The McDonald criteria may be used to diagnose MS. Criteria include Two events or attacks separated in time and space. MRI evidence consists consistent with MS and CSF findings. Also, analysis of evoked potentials as a means of identifying a second attack. The health care provider usually requests a CT scan, which may show an increased density in the white matter and MS plaques. MRI demonstrates the presence of plaques and is, considered uh, and is considered diagnostic for MS. A complete diagnostic evaluation is necessary to exclude other disease. Results of visual, auditory, and brainstem evoked potential studies are often ab abnormal. Uh, EMG findings may be grossly abnormal in people with advanced disease. The diagnosis of MS is made by the exclusion of other neurologic diseases by laboratory and neuroimaging assessment. Special criteria, including the presence of neurologic dysfunction that occurs over time in more than one area of the nervous system, CNS, is also diagnostic. Kerman, Kerman? Calm and nursing diagnoses and collaborative problems. 
Nursing diagnoses uh, that may apply to patients with MS include fatigue related to disease state, activity and tolerance related to generalized weakness, disturbed sensory perception, visual related to altered sense percep per reception, impaired physical mobility uh, related to neuromuscular impairment, Impaired urinary elimination related to sensory motor impairment. Chronic pain related to chronic physical disability. Self-care deficit related to neuromuscular impairment. Disturbed thought processes related to disease state. Uh, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to difficulty swallowing. Sexual dysfunction related to altered body function. Interventions. The purpose of management is to modify the disease's effects on the immune system, prevent exasperations, and manage symptoms, and improve function. Like for other spinal cord diseases, care of the patient with MS requires the collaborative efforts of the interdisciplinary team. The patient with MS is often weak and easily fatigued. The concept mapped on 1005 illustrates the common problems and interventions for the patient with MS. Teach the patient the importance of planning activities and allowing sufficient time to complete activities. For example, the patient should check that all items needed for work are gathered before leaving the house. Items used on a daily basis should be easily accessible. Drug therapy. Current therapies for MS are designed to treat a dysfunctional immune system. A variety of medications are used to treat and control the disease, decrease specific symptoms, and attempt to slow its progression. The National Multiple Sclerosis Society recommends early and continuous treatment of relapsing remitting MS uh, with one or more of these drugs. In Interferon beta or Avonex, also called uh, okay, called Avonex, Betaseron or Rebif, um, an immunomodulator that modifies the course of the disease and has antiviral effects. Uh, Natalizumab or Tysabri, the first monoclonal antibody approved for MS that binds to WBCs to prevent further damage to the myelin. Also glatiramer acetate or copazone. It's a synthetic protein that is similar to myelin based protein. Uh, na na natalizumab uh, or the tysabri has recently been associated with significant liver damage in some patients. Carefully monitor liver, liver enzymes and teach patients and their families to have frequent laboratory tests to assess for changes. Uh, mitoxantrone or Noventrone, a chemotherapy drug, has also been shown to be uh, effective in reducing neurologic disability. It also decreases the frequency of clinical relapses in patients with secondary progression or secondary progressive and progressive relapsing or worsening relapsing remitting MS. Okay. Immunosuppressive therapy with a combination of cyclo uh, cyclophosphamide or cytosan and methylprednisolone or solumedrol uh, may be used for treatment to stabilize the disease process. Methotrexate, or MTX, may also have a slight benefit. The healthcare provider may use methylprednisolone, uh, or uh, solumedrol, to reduce edema and the inflammatory response in acute exasperations. One gram is administered IV daily for 3 to 14 days, um, depending on the provider and the extent of the patient's symptoms. A course of oral prednisone 60 milligrams daily for five to seven days may be used following the methylprednisolone. Uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACTH uh, 25 to 60 international units IV or IM may be given instead of methylprednisolone and uh, tapered gradually over two to four weeks. 
the healthcare provider may prescribe baclofen or lyoresol, uh, diazepam or valium, apodiazepam, or dantrolene sodium or dantrium to lessen muscle spasticity. Severe spasticity may be treated with intrathecal baclofen or ITB uh, administered through a surgically implanted pump. A surgical tendon release uh, may also be performed by the physician if spasms prevent the patient from learning uh, mobility and ADL skills. Okay. Uh, Parathesia may be treated with carbamazepine or tegretol or tricyclic antidepressants, propanolol, hydrochloride or indurel, and clozapam or clonopin have been used to treat cerebellar ataxia. If a fatigue cannot be controlled through the use of non-pharmacologic measures, amantadine, hydrochloride, or simitrel may be prescribed. Bladder dysfunction or detrusor hyperreflexion reflexia. Detrusor hyperreflexia is treated with anticholinergic agents. Pain and paresthesia are often problems for the MS patient. Antispasmodics, antileptic drugs, AEDs, analgesics, and NSAIDs, tranquilizers, or antidepressants may be used, depending on the cause of the pain and the patient's response. Promoting mobility and managing symptoms. In collaboration with physical and occupational therapists, plan an, an exercise program that includes ROM exercises and uh, strengthening and stretching and strengthening exercises. Emphasize the importance of avoiding rigorous activities that increase body temperature. Increased body temperature may lead to increased fatigue, diminished motor ability, and decreased visual acuity results from changes in the con conduction abilities of the injured axons. Okay, uh, cognitive impairment may occur early in the disease process. Uh, many patients have some degree of neuropsychological dysfunction during the course of their disease. Areas affected include attention, memory, problem solving, auditory reasoning, handling distractions, visual perception, and use of speech. To assist the patient with orientation, place a single date calendar in the patient's room. Give or encourage the patient uh, to use written lists or recorded messages. To maintain an organized environment, encourage the patient to keep frequently used items in familiar places. If the patient experiences dysarthria or slurred speech, refer to the speech language pathologist, SLP, for evaluation and treatment. It is not unusual for the patient with dysarthria also to have dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. The SLP will do a swallowing evaluation. Further diagnostic testing may be indicated. Women report impaired genital sensation, diminished orgasm, and loss of sexual interest. Men most often difficulty in report difficulty in achieving and maintaining an erection and delayed ejaculation. Many patients may have or may be embarrassed to discuss their concerns about intimacy and sexuality. Therefore, ask the patient whether he or she has any concerns. If able, answer the patient's questions or refer the patient to a counselor or urologist with experience in the field of sexuality, intimacy, and disability. The patient may uh, experience a variety of bladder problems. In addition to drug therapy, other measures include an intermittent self-catheterization program, indwelling urinary catheter, or insertion of a bladder pacemaker. When the patient activates the control on the pacemaker, the bladder is stimulated and voiding is initiated. Patients with MS are in at increased risk for urinary tract infections. Prophylactic antibiotics may be prescribed by the health care provider. Remind the patient to drink plenty of fluids unless uh, contraindicated by other medical conditions. An eye patch that is alternated from eye to eye every few hours uh, usually re relieves diplopia or double vision. For peripheral visual deficits, teach scanning techniques by having the patient move his or her head from side to side. Changes in visual acuity may be 
assisted by corrective lenses. Complementary, complementary and alternative therapies. Patients with MS have reported a number of complementary and alternative therapies that have been successful in minimizing their symptoms, including bee stings and nutritional supplements. Bee stings? The usefulness of these modalities continues to be researched. The patient may use moist, moderate heat, massage, correction of posture abnorm abnormalities, um, exercises to increase muscle strength, and electrical stimulation of the affected area to increase the comfort level. Among other alternative treatments for pain are guided imagery, aromatherapy, and acupuncture. Marijuana has been used by some patients to relieve the pain of muscle spasms and is now legal for medical use in several U.S. states. It is not currently legal in Canada. Boo! Community-based care. Home care management. To help the patient maintain maximum strength, function, and independence, continuity of care through an interdisciplinary team in both uh, the rehabilitation and home setting is necessary. Admission to a rehabilitation center is brief but usually provides a program to improve functional ability. In collaboration with the case manager and occupational therapist, assess the patient's home before discharge for any hazards. Any items that might interfere with mobility, e.g. scatter rugs, are removed. In addition, uh, care must be taken to prevent injury resulting from vision problems. Teach the patient and family to keep the home environment as structured and as free from clutter as possible. As the disease progresses, the home may need to be ad adapted for wheelchair accessibility. Any necessary assistive adaptive de device should be readily available before discharge from the hospital. Health teaching. The health care provider explains to the patient and family the development of MS and the factors that may exacerbate the symptoms. Emphasize the importance of avoiding overexertion, stress, uh, extremes of temperature, fever, hot baths, overheating, and excessive chilling. Humidity and people with upper respiratory uh, tract infections. Yeah. Point. Emphasize the importance of avoiding exertion, stress, extremes of temperature, fever, hot baths, overheating, and excessive chilling humidity and people with upper respiratory tract infections so avoid those people explain all medications to be taken on discharge including the time and route of administration dosage purpose and side effects teach the patient how to differentiate expected side effects uh, from adverse or allergic reactions and provide the name of a resource person to call if questions or problems occur provide written instructions as a resource for the patient and caregivers at home the physical therapist develops an exercise program appropriate for the patient's tolerance level. The patient is instructed in techniques for self-care, uh, daily living skills, and the use of required adaptive equipment, such as walkers and electric carts. Include information related to bowel and bladder management, skin care, nutrition, and positioning techniques. Chapter 8 describes in detail these aspects of chronic illness and rehabilitation. Teach patients about the importance of obtaining adequate rest and avoiding undue stress. It is equally important for them to engage in regular social activities. Often patients are anxious and worry about how long their remission will last or when the disease will progress. Because personality changes are not unusual, teach the family or significant other strategies to enable them to co cope with these changes. For example, the family may develop a nonverbal signal to alert the patient to potentially inappropriate behavior, e.g., a talkative person may be reminded to be quiet if a family member displays a prearranged signal. This action avoids embarrassment for the patient. Healthcare resources. Uh, resources required by the patient depend on the course of the disease and the complications that occur. Patients often are able to live completely independent or may need some assistance. In severe disease, placement in an assisted living or long-term care facility may be the best alternative. The population of young and middle-aged residents in these settings is increasing as people with chronic disabling diseases live longer. 
Refer the patient and family members or significant others to the local chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Other community resources include meal delivery services, e.g. Meals on Wheels, transportation services for the disabled, and homemaker services. And that was multiple sclerosis. Okay, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, pathophysiology. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is an adult onset upper and lower motor neuron disease. It is characterized by progressive weakness, muscle wasting, and spasticity, eventually leading to paralysis. Beginning in one area of the body, motor weakness and deterioration spread until the entire body is involved, including the ability to talk, swallow, and breathe. As a result of loss of lower motor neurons, LMNs, found in the spinal cord and brainstem, the muscles they connect to weaken, atrophy, and die. Loss of death of upper neurons found in the brain breaks their connections with LMN, the lower, lower motor neurons, and spasticity occurs in the muscles. Death typically occurs within three years of diagnosis due to respiratory failure. There is no known cause, no cure, no specific treatment, no standard pattern of progression, and no method of prevention. Jeez, it's a bad one. Unlike with many other neural degenerative diseases, the sensory and autonomic nervous systems are not involved. Cognitive and behavioral dysfunction may occur, although the exact cause and extent of this has not been established. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis may occur at any age, but it, it is not common. The usual age of onset is between 40 and 70 years. The incidence increase, increases with each decade of life. ALS is more common in men than in women. More recently diagnosed patients appear to have slower disease progression than patients seen before 2001, which has been suggested to be due to lifestyle and environmental changes. The cause of the disease is unknown. Researchers are exploring interaction of genetic, viral, and environmental factors as potential causes. Patient-centered collaborative care assessment. And clinical manifestations of ALS include fatigue, muscle atrophy, and weakness. Early symptoms are listed in chart 4516. Along with the motor changes, cognitive changes may be noted in thinking and planning processes. As the disease progresses, muscle atrophy particularly of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles develops. Eventually, the respiratory muscles become involved, leading to respiratory compromise, pneumonia, and death. Diagnosis is based on clinical and diagnostic test findings and by ruling out other causes of the motor changes. There is no specific test to diagnose ALS, but creatine kinase, or CK, is increased. The electro a uh, myogram or EMG uh, demonstrates f fibrillations and fasc fasciculations of the muscles. A muscle biopsy specimen typically demonstrates small angulated atrophic fibers. Other um, diagnostic studies reveal motor strength deficits in serial muscle testing. Abnormal pulmonary function test results such as decreased vital capacity, less than 2 liters, and dysphagia, difficulty swallowing. Interventions. There is no known cure for ALS, but an interdisciplinary approach is needed for maintaining optimum functioning in end-of-life care. Reluzol, or Rilutec, is the only drug approved by the Food and Drug Administration for use with ALS patients. It is not a cure, but it does extend survival time. The usual dose is 50 milligrams twice daily on an empty stomach. The, mon the patient is monitored for liver toxicity from the drug by frequent measures of liver en enzymes, such as alanine, aminotransferase, ALT, and aspartate or aminotransferase, AST. Teach him or her the importance 
of keeping all follow-up appointments. The health care provider The health care provider also prescribes medication for pain, fatigue, spasticity, excessive secretions, sleep disturbances, and other complications as they occur. The interdisciplinary team collaborates with the patient and family to develop an individualized plan of care. The, phy the physical therapist and occupational therapist evaluate the patient's home and recommend modifications as the, degree, the disease progresses. An exercise and mobility program is developed and special equipment is obtained as needed to help with ADLs and mobility. Other interventions are directed toward preventing complications of immobility and promoting comfort. Chart 4516 Key Features Early Clinical Manifestations of Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis Tongue Atrophy These are early. Tongue Atrophy Weakness of the hands and arms Beginning muscle atrophy of the arms uh, Fasciculations or twitching of the face uh, Nasal quality of speech Dysarthria or slurred speech Dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, fatigue while talking. So it looks like it starts in the face and the hands and arms, mostly. The speech language pathologist, or SLP, evaluates the patient for speech and swallowing problems and makes recommendations as needed. The SLP teaches uh, patients various adaptive strategies, such as techniques, to help them speak louder and more clearly. He or she works with the patient and family to develop a communication system to be used when the patient can no longer verbally communicate. A nutrition consultant is ma made to help with planning meals that the patient can swallow. The family is taught how to ensure that the patient obtains sufficient nutrients, fiber, and fluids. When the patient can no longer swallow, a feeding tube may be placed, uh, depending on the patient's decision or advanced directives. The nutritionist can recommend the appropriate enteral feedings. For symptomatic treatment of dyspnea and or intractable pain, opioids alone or in combination with benzodiazepines, if anxiety is present, may be prescribed. Um, titrating the dosages against the clinical symptoms is less likely to cause life-threatening respiratory depression. For treating terminal restlessness and confusion because of hypercapnia, uh, neuroleptics may be used, e.g. Uh, chlorpromazine or thorazine or chlorpromine uh, 12.5 milligrams every 4 to 12 hours orally IV or rectally at some point the patient will require respiratory support uh, intermittent positive pressure ventilation IPPV or bi-level positive airway pressure BiPAP um, may be used to aid breathing during sleep or full time Mechanical ventilation enables the patient to breathe and prolong survival. It will not alter progression of the disease. For this reason, many patients select not to be placed on a mechanical ventilator according to their wishes or advanced directives. Refer the patient to a hospice program. The hospice team works closely with the, patient, with the family to ensure the patient's comfort. They collaborate with the health care provider to ensure that the patient has the needed medication and pain control as well as quality of life for the patient and family. A hospice nurse also provides ongoing support and counseling to the patient and the family as they begin to cope with the impact of this terminal disease. Teach the patient about the need for advanced directives such as the living well. Chapter 9 discusses end-of-life issues in hospice services in detail. Community resources include clinics and other support services run by the ALS Association, ALSA.org or the Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA.org. Human Needs uh, Nursing Care Review What might you notice if the patient is experiencing inadequate mobility and sensation as a result of spinal cord health problems? You might notice weakness or paralysis of one or more extremities, report of decreased sensation in one or more extremities, muscle spasticity or, flacc or flaccidity, uh, forward bent position when ambulating, limb or altered gait, or limp or altered gait, bladder incontinence or retention, bowel incontinence or retention,
Report of pain in back or in one or more extremities. And difficulty breathing. What should you interpret and how should you respond to a patient experiencing inadequate mobility and, sens and sensation as a result of spinal cord health problems? So what should you interpret and how should you respond to a patient experiencing blah, blah, blah. Perform an, and interpret physical assessment including assessing airway patency and breathing pattern, assessing level of consciousness, taking vital signs, performing a, performing a complete physical assessment, performing a complete neurological assessment, and assessing level of pain. Respond by establishing an airway as needed, st stabilizing the spine by positioning until surgery or other treatment is provided, preparing for imaging assessment tests, providing pain medication as prescribed, inserting an indwelling urinary catheter, and co collaborating with healthcare team, especially the physical therapist and the occupational therapist if needed. On what should you reflect? Monitor the patient for changes in condition, including deterioration of neurological status. Consider how to best collaborate with the healthcare team uh, when caring for patients with spinal cord injury or illness. Think about family reaction to the injury or illness and what additional resources could have been used or should be used in the future. Get ready for NCLEX examination. Key points. Review these key points for NCLEX examination client needs category. Safe and effective care environment. To help prevent back injury, use proper body mechanics as described in chart 45. Five. For patients who have back surgery, observe the incision site for bleeding in the cerebral sp uh, fluid leakage or clear fluid. Log roll patients having spinal surgery, especially those who have fusions. For patients with SCI, assess airway first. Observe patients with spinal injuries and diseases for complications of immobility. Monitor respiratory status uh, carefully in patients with uh, amyotrophic lateral uh, sclerosis, patients experiencing respiratory failure in terminal stages of the disease. Um, so consider their advanced directives to assist in planning care. Health promotion and maintenance. Teach patients who have had spinal surgery to avoid lifting and driving and to use proper body mechanics. Teach overweight and obese patients the importance of losing weight to reduce back pain and strain. Refer patients to appropriate resources such as a sexuality counselor or a urologist for sexual dysfunction resulting from illness or disease. Counsel them as needed about sexuality issues. Assess patients with spinal cord injuries and disease for the need for adaptive or assistive devices to become independent in ADLs. Implement bowel and bladder retraining programs for patients with uh, SCI and spinal diseases. Psychosocial integrity. Recognize that spinal cord injury and progressive neurologic diseases such as MS require the patient to adjust to major life changes. Determine patient and family coping strategies to help patients adjust to spinal trauma or disease. Encourage patients to share their feelings about life-altering SCI or neurodegenerative disease. Refer patients with spinal cord cancer to appropriate resources such as the American Cancer Society and its support groups. Physiological integrity. Uh, assess pain level in patients with back injury, including the nature of the pain and location. Provide complete neurologic assessment of patients with spinal cord health problems, including muscle assessment as described in chart 45.8. Implement drug and non-drug interventions for back pain, including analgesics, NSAIDs, and muscle relaxants. Suggest heat as an adjunct to medication. Provide post-operative care and discharge teaching for patients having cervical neck surgery in, as listed in chart 45.6. Implement interventions to prevent complications associated with immobility, including turning, early ambulation, or transfers out of bed and incentive spirometry. Monitor patients with cervical spine injuries for manifestations of autonomic dysreflexia. Some of this stuff isn't pertinent to what we, was read in this chapter, but... This is the end, and I'll just get to all of them. Oh, it's almost done. Provide emergency care for patients who experience autonomic uh, dysreflexia, as listed in chart 4511. Um, and assess patients with multiple sclerosis for clinical manifestations, as listed in chart 4515. Fatigue is the most common system sy symptom, and provide supportive care for the patient with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. 
refer to hospice in the terminal stage of the disease. Okay, and that was ALS. And the rest. Peace.